Do you have virtual machines in multiple places? Is it on different hypervisors or in different clouds? Is the VM here or is it over there? If you've ever asked yourself VMware, hi, I'm from Nutanix and we're here to help. Hi, my name is David Teague, Technical Marketing Engineer at Nutanix. And today we're going to look at Nutanix Move, our migration and mobility tool that is free to all Nutanix customers. We're going to walk through how it works, so let's get started. This is the dashboard where you start after you log in. On the left, you can see the different environments that I already have set up. If we go to the upper left and click on Add Environment, we can look at the information needed for each environment. If we start with ESXi, you would need to name the environment. Then you would need a vCenter name or standalone ESXi IP address or FQDN. If you use a standalone ESXi server, you'll only see the VMs on that server, and it will still need to be connected to a vSphere instance. You will then need a username and password that has access to take and delete snapshots. The full list of permissions needed for the username is located in the user guide. If we select Nutanix AOS as our environment type, you will need the IP or FQDN of the Prism Central instance or the Prism element for the clusters. You will also need a username with the appropriate access. If you choose to use Prism Central, you will have access to all the Nutanix clusters that are attached to that Prism Central, as well as the ability to select VM categories when migrating VMs to Nutanix. The Nutanix AOS environment type includes Nutanix Cloud Clusters, Nutanix AHV, and ESXi running on Nutanix. With Hyper-V, it's very similar. You will need the IP address of the Hyper-V cluster or a single server, and a username and password with the correct permissions. With Azure, you can see all the different options you need. If you click on the link that says Create Azure Client ID slash Secret, there are great step-by-step -step instructions on how to create and get the info needed to connect to Azure. Last but not least, with AWS, you will need your AWS Access Key ID and AWS Secret Access Key. This can be created if you don't have one in the Identity Management section of the AWS Management Console. Now that we've moved through the different options of the environments, which can be either a source or a target, let's create a migration plan. After you name your migration plan on the Source Target screen, depending on what you select as your source, will determine what your eligible targets are. If we select vSphere as our source, whether it's currently running on Nutanix or legacy VMware infrastructure, your eligible migration targets would be Nutanix AHV, ESXi Nutanix, Nutanix Cloud Clusters, or NC2 for short, which run on Microsoft Azure Cloud or Amazon AWS EC2. With Nutanix AHV as a source, you can migrate to Nutanix AHV, including NC2, AWS EC2, or Microsoft Azure Cloud. With Microsoft Azure as your source, you can migrate to AHV, ESXi and Nutanix, or NC2 on Azure. Moving on to AWS, you can migrate to AHV, ESXi on Nutanix, or NC2 on AWS. I did not show Hyper-V, but if Hyper-V is your source, you can migrate to AHV, ESXi and Nutanix, or NC2 on AWS or Azure. So I'm gonna select vCenter, and then I'm going to choose my target and the target container, which is our storage location. The target screen is similar no matter what you select as your target. Next, we're going to select the VMs we want to include in the migration plan. With the SXI, you can have up to 50. You can see the maxes for each environment in the Move user guide. Once you are happy with your selections, click Next. On the network configuration screen, you will select the network you want the migrated VMs to use. If your target is running on Nutanix, you do have the option of selecting a test network so you can test the migration without impacting the source VM. It is recommended that your test network is not routable to the network that the source VM is currently on. If you're using VPCs in your Nutanix environment, you would need to select Prism Central as your target. Once you're happy with your network selection, go ahead and click Next. On the VM Preparation section, you will have the option of preparing the source VMs either automatically or manually. If you choose manually, you'll need to copy the scripts shown here and run them on each of the source VMs. If you choose automatic, you'll need credentials with administrator or root privileges. Under guest operations, you can choose to retain the static IP addresses of the source VMs if they have one. If you don't check it, the VMs on the target will be converted to DHCP. With Windows VMs, Move will not retain configurations for disconnected network adapters. The next option you can choose is to uninstall the VMware tools on the target VMs. This is a recently added feature to Move and only available with ESXi as your source. With it selected, once the VM has completed migration, the VMware tools will be uninstalled. The other option is a data-only migration. This means Move will not do any of the preparation steps, 
such as install the appropriate drivers for the source VM that will allow it to boot on the target hypervisor. You would need to install the appropriate drivers manually if you'd like this VM to boot on your target. If you choose Override Individual VM Preparation, you can select each of the previous mentioned options for each individual VM in your migration plan. This is what the VM preparation screen would look like if AWS or Azure was your source. As you can see, you have fewer options to select. And if automatic preparation is selected, Move will use the AWS or Azure management agents to do the VM preparation and will not need any additional credentials. We're back to our original migration plan, and if we're happy with everything here, we're going to click Next. On the VM settings screen, the first option is to set the VM's priority. This controls the scheduling order and allocation of network bandwidth for the VMs. You can select the time zone, and you can also choose to retain the MAC addresses for the VMs. I have found retaining MAC addresses can be helpful when migrating Linux VMs. You can also choose to skip the CD-ROM addition on the target VM if you don't want to have a CD-ROM on the target VM. The next option is Enable Memory Overcommit. This is available if you are on Nutanix AOS version 6.02 or greater. You also have the option of selecting the setting individually for each VM like you could in the VM preparation screen. If you want the data seeding to start at a specific time, you would need to select the option and set a date and time for it to start. This is what the VM setting screens would look like if your target is Nutanix AHV, ESXi on Nutanix, or NC2. If your target is AWS EC2 or Azure Cloud, the settings are slightly different and you will not have the option to skip CD-ROM edition or MAC address retention. From here, we will click Next. And if you did not set a schedule to start data seeding, Move will immediately start copying the data from the source to the target. The migration from ESXi to AHV has started. While that's running, let's click on the gear icon in the upper right and then choose Bandwidth Throttling. If we click on Create Policy, we can see the options that we can select. Much like creating a migration plan, you have to set a name for the plan, and you also have to select a source environment that you want the policy to apply to. Once you've selected a source, you can set it to apply all the time or for a specific duration. So if you only wanted to apply this during business hours, you could set the hours and select the appropriate days, and then select the bandwidth limit in megabytes. We're going to cancel out and head back to the main screen. If we hover over in progress, we can see that the migration plan status has changed to ready for cutover, which means all the VMs in this migration plan are ready. If we click on in progress, this will open the plan details page, where we can see the different options we have for the VMs in the migration plan. When you make a selection below, it will show you the different options that you can use with those selections. If you set up a test network in the migration plan, you can select test actions and create a test VM to test the migration without modifying the source VM. If you've already created a test VM, you could recreate it if something has changed on the source or you can delete the test VM. If you choose the pause option, this will pause the data seeding for all the selected VMs. If you click on Cutover, you will get a pop-up that will tell you what will happen to all of the selected VMs when you click Continue. This will be the step that will power off the source VM. Once we click Continue, Move will QS the source VM, and it will take the final snapshot and sync the data. Then it will start configuring the target VM. When View Target VM appears, you can select that to open the location that the VM has been migrated to. While that is happening, Move will do cleanup operations on the source, but the source VM is not deleted, it will just be powered off. If we click on View Target VM, we'll be able to see the VM on the target cluster. And if we click on the Launch Console to open a console window, we can see that the migration has been completed successfully. If we look at our source VM on ESXi, we will see that it leaves a note that this VM was migrated with Move and on what date. If we click on the properties of that VM, we can see that the network adapter has been disconnected. If the VM was on Azure or AWS, it would leave a note, as we're showing here in AWS, with the date that it was moved and the migration plan that moved it. If we go back to the Move console, when all the VMs in the migration plan are migrated, the status will say complete. We can then delete the plan if we would like to. That wraps up our look at Nutanix Move. And as you can see, it's a powerful tool for managing your virtual infrastructure with Nutanix, whether you're using it for migration, mobility, or consolidation. To learn more about Nutanix Move, check out the video in the lower left. Don't forget to click subscribe so you don't miss any new videos.